been a little time since 2017 has started and a lot of the best and worst songs slash albums of 2016 has already come out but I want to but I want to give my thoughts about what I thought about 2016 in music since I didn't really do a whole lot of music reviews in 2016 since you know I thought since when I first started listening to the music in early 2016 I thought I why even buy her because you know in 2014 and 2015 those were my big years of reviewing music especially in 2014 and I'm thinking that you know I'm gonna review some more music in 2017 just to let you guys know but anyhow so why did I say why buy about 2016 and by many critics including myself 2016 has been considered to be a less you know important and less you know valuable music wise when it comes to chart success and about like you know overall single quality now oh now compared to 2015 which got a lot of praise from a lot of people from both fans and critics I'm gonna tell you people why I think 2016 was not as successful as 2015 and the reason being I think it was trying to copycat 2015 now let's now let's break this down to as to what made 2015 successful now what made 2015 successful I think was first of all how kind of dreadful 2014 was and how a lot of the music was based around the clubs or about how, how DJ Mustard was running like you know every like rap song or R&B hit that was on the radio at that time and so I think a lot of people demanded something more poetic something more like you know really something that's really dense in content so they liked artists like The Weeknd or they liked Tov Lo like the continuation of Tov Lo like the point is that you know they wanted darker content and it was pretty successful I think and you know not only commercially but also the critics absolutely adored it but then, you know, but then once so someone sees something successful, they figure, hey, why not copy it? But not for the quality of it, but just for the fact that we want to make more money off of it. And so they did that, and as a result, we got a lot of cookie cutter, like just dark, melodramatic, just, you know, these borderline whiny songs from people like Alyssa Cara or Dea or... You know, even I would say the chain smokers to a point. And speaking about the chain smokers, I mean, where were they during 2015? Yeah, I mean, if you got, if anyone remembers their hit song "Selfie" back in 2014, like that was their really our only song, and then they kind of disappeared off the map. But they came back in 2016. Well, that's interesting to note because I think you know they wanted to recreate their sound, and I feel like that you know, I've. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Now, this is just my opinion, so don't get too triggered by this. But I don't think the Chainsmokers are really an original group. Like, I think what they do is they take what's trending right now and they'll make it seem original, but they in reality don't. Because if you look, if you listen to their beats or if you listen to who they get in their vocal production, they get really what's ever popular now. Take, for example, the Selfie song. That came out like what, early 2014, late 2013, somewhere around there, I don't know. But the point is, around that time, the whole term selfie was starting to become very popular. And so what do you do? You cash, you cash on in the trend by making a quote-unquote parody song about it. But in reality, I don't think it really goes into that territory. But that's a whole different discussion for another day. But the point is, is that, you know, they cash off the trend. They were successful. They didn't care about the critical attention. Like, honestly... With the chain smokers, I really don't think they care about critical attention, which it's good not to get let critics get under your skin. It's always good to like produce the work that you think is gonna be the best. But I honestly don't think the chain smokers really like, you know, do that. But anyhow, enough about those guys for now. If you guys want me to rant more about the chain smokers, I will certainly do that like in later videos. Because these guys will probably be sticking around for a while. But anyhow, so the point is, is that, you know, I feel like that a lot of the music executives, the producers, you know, the writers, well, I'm not even sure about the writers, but, or a lot of the big music bigwigs, like, they just saw what was trending popular and they ran wild with it. And I think they pretty much took advantage of it and now people are starting to get kind of bored of it. They look at it as all hipster trash or just, you know teens being too emo like I even saw this one video of Paul Joseph Watson attacking the whole depression culture 
Well, I guess that's part of the reason why that's becoming so popular is because what's on the radio right now. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love artists that talk about depression and really break it down. Like artists like Radiohead, for example, do this to a near perfection. Like it's not bad to talk about it, but if you just whine and moan and, oh, I'm sad, but you have no substance or no base to it, then it's just absolute trash, I think. Like you got to have substance to what you're talking about. Even, no matter what emotion is in the music, you got to have substance. So yeah, I think 2016, for the most part, at least with the popular stuff, no, no matter if it was rap or no matter if it was, you know, rap, R&B, pop, like, it lacks substance this year. I feel like that, you know, hopefully 2017 is going to bring in at least some more substance. Again, I don't expect it, 2017 to be a great year, but I want to have some quality at least. Well, that is my rant, people. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure to please like, comment, and subscribe. And tell again, this is Ian Ward signing off, and I am thankful to be alive. Bye.